Okay, let's have a little fun, shall we? I'm going to read you and then comment on Sean McDowell's five implications if there is no God. What, that doesn't sound like fun to you? <laughs> what are you? We're having fun, no? No, that's not fun at all? Well, okay, you know, I'm a Christian apologist. I don't get out much. So it's fun for me. Um, actually, I'm doing this YouTube channel just for fun. Yeah, call that weird if you want to, but I ain't making any money off it. Sure, one day I'll have a big, huge church and I'll build those congregants for everything they got and take their ties and buy a cool jet. But as of today, you know, I'm doing this little channel here for fun. So this is fun for me. And, well, no, okay, so it's not really all that fun. But anyways, we got Sean McDowell's five implications that there, if there is no God. So if, they, if you, the atheists, are correct, which you aren't, but if you were, and there wasn't a God, these are the implications. These are five things that he says that would be true. Now let's see if he's correct. So it's fun. You see, it is fun. We're going we're gonna to read over his five things, and we're going to decide for ourselves. All right, well, you know, suit yourself. If you don't think that's fun, <laughs> I can't help you. Now, Sean McDowell is one of these, normally I avoid these type of things, that's why I keep calling it fun, because uh, normally I avoid the standard, he's more of a standard traditional apologetics guy, and I tend to avoid those standard, standard issue Christian apologetics argument. Why? Because they're mostly fallacious. I don't usually agree with them, and I don't usually find them convincing as proofs of God. On most of them, I side with you, the atheist. And this one, we, I might too. That's why this is fun and interesting, because we're going to read them together and we'll see. We'll see what we think. But Sean McDowell's his name. Number one, there is no God that implies there is no meaning or purpose to life. Now, I'm reading them backwards. That's actually number five. The reason I'm reading them backwards is there's only two that are true. And I figured I'd start with the only one that's true. That's true says reality is a cosmic accident. Now, there gets confusion over the word cosmic accident because people don't understand the term. I've heard a lot of atheists spin out of this one. It can't really be spun out of. There are only really two choices. Either we were purposed and intended to be here or we are a cosmic accident. Cosmic accident does not mean oopsie-daisy there's life. It means life is a random occurrence. It has nobody authored it into existence. It's spun up organically of its own accord. Ex nihilo if you want. It's a random occurrence. That's what a cosmic accident means. People get hung up on the term accident. All it means is that life is spontaneous random occurrence. So there can be no intrinsic meaning to life. This is correct. You can take this further, which I've done in some of my other videos, which means there can be no such thing as a personal destiny. There can be a destiny that you design for yourself, that you give for yourself, my, my destiny is to be, you know, a great basketball player. But there can be no destiny that was put in you before your birth. Nothing you are intended to achieve with your life. No purpose. No intrinsic purpose to your life. So he's correct on that one. Number two, there is no life after death. Yeah, that would be pretty straightforward. These are the only two I agree with, the first, first two. The present life is all that exists, and death is the end. If there is no God, it's more than likely that there is no afterlife. At least there's no way on earth there is the Christian concept of an afterlife where you stand before the Lord and you go to Jesus and, you know, you're happy forever and ever and ever. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that afterlife. No, that one, ain't, that one ain't happening if there's no God. Then there's no Jesus. You're not going to stand before the Lord, judge you for your sins. And, you know, if you lived a good and holy life like myself... Get blessed with a huge mansion in forever. No, that ain't going to happen. It's possible that there could be some version of reincarnation um, if there is no God. The, so in some concepts of the Hindu religion, which believes in reincarnation, there are some variations of it where there is not actually a God. There are multitude of God figures, millions upon millions of them, um, but it depends. It really depends on which there's a lot of different variations on Hinduism. And the, the standard one, there is a God concept known as Brahman, um, or the ultimate, the ultimate mind. But 
it's entirely possible that this is 100% correct too. If there is no God, there could possibly be a reincarnation, but there would not be an afterlife, and absolutely there'd be no afterlife in any of the classic Christian sense. Number three, there is no intrinsic human value. Now he goes on to say humans have no more ultimate worth than a rock. That one I'm going to put right in the middle. That's an argument that a theist could make and will try to make, but there are very, very, very good counter-arguments. I'm sure any atheist hearing this, you're the atheist, you hear it, Do you, there's no God. Does that inherently mean that there's no worth to human life or there's no intrinsic value to human, human life? I doubt any atheist would agree to that. And they come up with different ways to justify the value of that life. Um, some successfully, some not so successfully, but I know that there would be counter-arguments and some of them would be... You know, I can think of some of the ones that some people have told me and some of them would be relatively plausible. So that's, that's, a, that's an in-between. It's not necessarily an implication if there is no God. Number two, there is no free will. <coughs> Human behavior is determined by genes and laws of nature. <coughs> Incorrect. Whether or not there is a God has very little bearing on whether there is free will or not. One of the things that atheists get confused all the time, and I won't go into it in this one, but I will make a video about it at some point, so, you know, don't worry. Oh, yeah, don't worry, I'll make a video about it at some point, but they, they get confused with the idea of God is omniscient, then there can be no such thing as free will because God knows what you're going to do. That's a really, really, really spacious conclusion. One does not follow directly into the other. Matter of fact, I've heard some, some atheists argue that those two are contrary one to the other. They're not. God can be perfectly omniscient and you can have free will. He can know exactly what you're going to do. It doesn't mean he caused you to do it. The, the best analogy that I've, that, I've, that I've come up with is you know for a fact that Trump is going to tweet something ridiculous in the next month. You know it for a fact, correct? Yes. Does that mean you caused him to do it? No, of course not. When I was having a debate with the guy at work about this, I said, Al, you know, I know you're going to be late for work tomorrow. <laughs> doesn't, mean that I, doesn't, doesn't mean I caused you to do it. Same principle. Yeah, God can know you're going to do something. That doesn't mean you didn't have free will in making a decision, even a stupid decision. You know, God could be shaking his head right now going, I can't believe that imbecile is going to do that thing that time again. And I have to sit here on my throne and watch it. <sighs> could be wringing his hands right now over the stupid decisions you're right about to make. So, the fact that you have free will has... Also, if there is no God, it doesn't even come close to negating free will. If there is no God, you have free will too. I don't believe the deterministic arguments. There is some form of determinism in behavior, that's clear. And there is some form of determinism in the fact of like, if you're talking about your overall life goals or your life things. If you, if you take this job, that's going to have some real relevance to your final outcomes, as opposed to if you do this. So there is some form of inherent determinism in the choices we make. Choices lead to other choices by nature, but that doesn't mean we don't have free will at all. It doesn't even imply it. And none of the scientific... Uh, none of the scientific studies that are locating decision-making processes in the brain really don't, they don't make any difference. There can be impulses to your brain that are going to imply you to do X or Y, but there are choices that people make all the time. And there's free will all the time, God or no God. Free will is a reality. Now, the final one, let's see what we got. There is no objective morality. There is no God, there is no objective morality. Right and wrong are illusions that arose blindly from evolution. I would say, eh, on that one, too. You'll find a lot of scientific atheists nowadays, in particular Sam Harris and Matt Dillahunty, and I tend to agree with them. Now, they are atheists, to the, to the bone. They're more atheists than you are, whoever's listening. They're, yeah, they're more atheists than you are. They, they don't even come close to believing in God. You're kind of like, eh, maybe. They're not. They're total atheists. They're totally and completely atheists. But both of them have decided that morality is objective. And if you listen to Matt Dillahunty, Sam Harris copied him. <laughs> I don't know for a fact that that's true, but, you know, they, they, they liken morality 
And I agree with both of their conclusions. Not about God, but about morality, yeah, they're 100% correct. They liken morality to a chess match. If your outcome, if you've decided ahead of time what the outcome for, you know, what you would like to see, the well-being of the society at large, the well-being of the individual, just like in a chess match, you can decide which moves are going to objectively determine whether you're going to win the game or not. You can objectively determine at the outcome which values and ethics to instill in human beings that are going to produce better results in the society at large. This is actually a no-brainer. And it was very, it's only a matter of time before all atheists start seeing the light on this particular one and coming to the same conclusion, because it's indefensible. It's absolutely true. You can liken mor uh, morals to nutrition. You can decide, objectively speaking, what nutrients to put in your body that's going to produce a healthier body. You, can, you don't necessarily have to call them morals and values. That's what people get tripped up on. But you can decide, objectively speaking, what ethics, what values, what things that you instill in an individual that are going to produce as a general rule, success, health, and well-being, and in the society at large as well. This is obvious. So no, you, and they'll tell you you don't need God to do it, and I tend to agree with them. Just like you don't necessarily need a God to decide, you know, 2 plus 2 equals 4 and work out a mathematical problem. Those things may imply that there is a God. Now, we haven't gotten there yet. I'll do videos on that subject, so just you, just you wait. Don't you worry about that. But for the time being, that's all that we're going to say in the subject for now. So, out of the five implications, only two are correct. That's why I don't usually deal with, you know, standard Christian apologetics types. Because they kind of fudge things, try to prove their point. I don't find any reason to do that myself. So, that's all for now. And yeah, I thought it was fun. You didn't think it was fun? <laughs> I'm with that. All right. I thought it was fun. You didn't think it was fun. All right. Well, whatever. I'm in. Bye-bye.